Hi guys, welcome back to another Matchbox Garage video where today I have forgotten to take the twirly bit so we jump straight into it. Drill down the centre of the post, remove the flange, tap the hole. Try to always remember my very handy vice. I kind of forgot a little bit during this video, you will find out. So, screw's already in place. You don't need to see me drilling. Reading Matchbox Series number 67, Volkswagen 1600 TL. So let's get these screws out. And see what we're playing with. You'll already notice in the thumbnail this is going to end up being a two car video. It's also a little bit longer than your usual to accommodate, so hopefully you'll stick around. But the base in good condition, the tyres of now I understand do not come off of these wheels. So we've got the wheel kind of suspension retaining piece. Interior in whoops. In good condition, but just needing a little bit of a spruce up with some soapy water. windscreen on this particular car I needed to remove the flange and this is two minutes later and it was a little bit of a bugger to remove but got there in the end unfortunately at this point I noticed the A pillars were snapped through not only the A pillars but also at the bottom here so actually the car was only holding on um, at one point and of course that's not going to be good enough I think if just one or even two points were broken perhaps we could have you know figured out a, a fix whether it be super glue or other but I think this is just going to be too far gone but we'll, we obviously will continue to play with it nonetheless. It's at this point that a nice cup of tea, just to mull over what I can do with this broken car. Now looking into my load of cars I have two further Volkswagens here and I was already in the frame of mind to restore one of these so looked at all the A pillars and points and kind of tried to pick out one that was good uh, this one you can see the A pillar is broken just on one point but this purple car is good to go so let's try and restore that back to the uh, original uh, red colour with the older base and older wheels attached so there is the car with the base in position looking like it belongs but I will paint it this original colour or at least as close as I can I've got this Humbrol uh, gloss uh, paint which appears to be uh, the same colour or at least close enough for me so with this dodgy old one then like I say I'm just going to have a bit of fun with it so using caustic soda I'm going to take the paint off of the purple car only
Remember your safety here, safety gloves, safety glasses, ventilation. This stuff works in seconds and I don't have a lot of time. So this is what works for me. And like I say, just a couple of minutes later now, I've rinsed it out. And we are paint free. So there's the doors, not a speck of paint. Body of the car. There's no paint kind of attached to the body. There's little bits of paint here and there just hanging on that I just didn't wash off. It always leaves this kind of grey residue or I don't really know what it is but it quickly and easily comes off with a bit of a buff from my uh, wire brush there as you can see looking good as new so I'm gonna spray some uh, fine surface primer with the doors open to start with just so I can get all the door shuts under the doors etc And I'll let that dry, close up the doors, and then cover the whole casting. I don't push the doors fully closed, you know, they're a good 95% closed. I love this stuff though, it's uh, certainly well recommended. I should think one can must do 15 to 20 cars so looking good there like I say doors just open a little bit uh, there was some kind of little bit of uh, flashing there that I wanted to get rid of um, straight into the paint once it's dried I obviously had the PSI set to high on this one because it was coming out at quite a velocity so just giving a little quick burst like I say just to do the door shuts again and then I'll let this dry for certainly a lot longer uh, before closing up the doors compared to the uh, primer I find this paint the enamel certainly takes a lot longer to dry in comparison to acrylics and certainly in comparison to the primer which almost dries the instant it to the spray so with that now kind of keeping to one side and drying I was kind of going back to my little freak car and wondering what to do but uh, I managed to snap my drill bit while I was taking this off there we are and uh, drive it into my finger uh, which is um, a bit sore now um, went to see the wife and told her about it and wondered whether I needed stitches or something she cleaned me up and said that I'll live but doesn't recommend it but from that larger scale car now I've removed the wheels and these wheels will be going on to this Volkswagen. Uh, you know, in a kind of similar fashion to the rat rod that I did recently. I really enjoyed doing that rat rod and it has prompted me into wanting to make further kind of freaky cars. So I think I might do a bit of a freaky series of, uh, of these cars. So I'm going through my parts bin, kind of had a look at this. Got some interior there, or some front ball bars, and uh, like I say, just kind of um, switching backwards and forwards between the the nice Volkswagen and the freak uh, Volkswagen. I've turned down the psi of the paint now. I think it was on around 30 psi. 
and it's now just under 20 psi to be honest I could probably turn it down further although I didn't get any problems with this uh, this paint I do at a 50-50 um, um, just reaching for my thinner um, it's a proper humbrol enamel thinner and I'll do a 50-50 mix but um, I do really enjoy using these enamel paints I think they go on so nice they come out of the gun so nice they just take long to dry and they're a bit of a pig to clean the gun afterwards but needs must so this is it after a few coats of paint looking good very happy now going back to the freak you know I feel like I could just do whatever I want I'm just gonna roughly add some super glue just to keep it into position more than anything certainly not gonna worry about the looks if anything it's gonna add to the overall look So just trying to clasp it there in my hand. This stuff, I, I should get some different super glue really. Some of that stuff that is like a, an insta dry, because this one takes quite a while. But I'm gonna be using the uh, baking soda or baking powder um, just to try and help uh, quickly. And I use this little thing. And uh, this is quite handy for getting up the the powder and just putting it off but um, anyway I can see you I can see you I can see you watching me and here I am just trying to spread this white powder nice and even over the super glue to try and make it kind of dry much quicker really so I can crack on with it that was my overall goal but also you know it kind of it turns the glue itself into like a, a bit more of um, a manageable kind of object it's, it's odd really to try and explain I'm able to then maneuver it as like a almost like a gel, push it, mold it, um, texture it, and uh, like I say, because this is a freak car, I used it to almost mimic like rust or something like that. So now I am going to put it to one side to dry. As you can see, there's the areas there, and. I'm able to, like I say, I'm able to like mould it into a, a certain shape or position. So yeah, quite handy actually. And then so putting this to one side, I've obviously managed to get white powder everywhere. So I'm going to stop it here and clean up the evidence. Now we're all nice and clean. I've got these wheels in. So the, the original base is back on and it's got the kind of you know retaining plastic piece on the underside of the base. So these wheels go back into the same slots. So I still managed to get the original kind of suspension. Um, so that's pretty cool. 
and that ball bar stroke interior that I had from earlier on, like I say, the interior wasn't going to work, but I took the ball bars off and those will be going on. And I've got another one of these uh, larger scale cars, which I'll take the wheels off and those I'll use on a potential future freak project. In fact, they nearly fit this car. They probably could have done with a little bit of work. But you know, I'm st I'm set with the wheels I've got now, so I'll uh, put that towards um, a future build. But from this larger scale, it had these strange looking engines on the back. It was like a twin engine, but I was thinking, you know, maybe one of them will work because, of course, I couldn't take out the the bonnet or the hood there. I needed these retaining pins for the doors. Um, but these are like kind of flat and will sit, as you can see, uh, nice and flush. I keep dropping everything today. So here's the engine in place, and of course it's got these two bloody great big holes on the front, and I was thinking, how do I, do I just plug them, do I fill them, do I leave them, and, uh, well, this, this, um, kind of steel brush had the perfect diameter so I just cut that up um, and uh, put these little I guess they're intakes um, I think it looks quite cool and then for the interior I've gone with like a, a blue grey wash why blue grey no idea I just had three different colours there and uh, all in like a matte finish and I felt that the green and the brown would look quite good with on the on the outside of the car leaving me with this blue grey for the interior to be honest it was probably a 90% thinner with just a couple of drops of colour you know I didn't want to have a solid uh, blue grey finish I just wanted it to kind of go in all the little nooks and crannies there and I think it looks quite cool it dries better than this to be fair but I like I like I like the end result and like I say so I've got the green and the brown what I did was put the I just dropped a bit of the green into what was remaining from the blue-grey, extra thinner, and then I covered the car in this in this green. Um, I thought that I'd kind of ruined it initially because it seemed to almost mask all the orange, which I say orange is like a green, you know, red orange, um, which I didn't want. Um, but that's not how it finishes, that's not how it comes out, so yeah, I'm I'm still happy. Uh, I could just wipe it off. And uh, I covered the whole engine as well in this wash. Uh, main thing was to kind of go around the edges so it didn't look like it was an engine just stuck on the bonnet, which you know, in my opinion in person it doesn't you know, it doesn't look just like a, a block stuck on top of the hood, you know, it looks like it's coming through the hood. Uh, at least now it does anyway. So I grabbed a bit of tissue whilst everything was was wet and then just went around the car. Now whether this is the right thing or wrong thing, I have no idea. Um, you know, I haven't watched any other YouTubers, I haven't kind of studied to learn how to do this like weathering look um, or this this kind of freak look or I think there's a there's a few games that that have these style cars which you know I'm interested in um, but as far as that you know this is just my own imagination my own thoughts and feelings and just have a go at it um, that seems to be pretty much kind of like my channel really and where I am now is just just by having a go 
So now I've added a bit of brown to the mix. And I'm just going to go around the bottoms of the bottom of the car and over the arches there. You know, no rhyme or reason, just slap it on. Look as if it's perhaps driven through some mud. I don't think there's any right or wrong here. Now I guess if you probably put mud in front of the wheels it would look a bit odd. And I just dotted a bit of mud all around the car as well. Um, I thought, whoops, that was a bit too much. So you just take a bit off. Um, I recently went to a boot sale and drove through some mud and yeah, I threw mud all over my car so uh, that seems to be reflecting in in uh, you know doing this now and then again just grab some of this dirty mixture covering the wheels and tires I think the difference for me is just making sure that it doesn't look like it's it's been painted on you know um, trying to make it look realistic so apologies for having my big dumb hand in the way So yeah, I don't. I'm not one to kind of try and make for for perfection, you know. Especially, especially on this style of build, it seems like the the you know the less perfect that you do, uh, the better the finish. And then, you know, just kind of roll it around, just so that everything merges into each other and it looks a bit more natural you know I could do with getting some spaces just so that the wheels don't come in or they you know they stay out but at the moment I just position them to where they need to be but that's a good idea of you know what she's going to look like and of course we've got to do the ball bars too now I covered this in me dirty mixture here ideally what I should have probably done is paint it chrome first or silver first and then gone over with the dirty mixture but still looks good every car I learn something new right so this is the the clean car as you can see I put a little bit of extra detail now and uh, this is now the the finished product of the freak car just a little side project whilst I'm doing this restoration you notice I've kind of painted in the headlights and I've put a decal on the top as well but with that aside I'm gonna put the base with the wheels and the plastics in some warm soapy water and clean them up a bit pulled the windscreen out in my decanted pledge put that to one side interior come out nice and clean don't need to do anything with that and then you can see I've just started to use my wire wheel and I'm halfway through just giving this a bit of a buff up
Right, so you know what the freak looks like. Here's all the bits and pieces for the restoration. I'm going to put these back together now, uh, off camera, and you'll see it just about now. So there we are, guys. You got the freak there. See that kind of where I put that bit of super glue? Looks like a bit of a rust patch now, doesn't it? Quite cool. You'll see I've painted the headlights yellow on the freak too, and a bit of black on the top of the uh, intakes. And then you've got the nice clean restoration. It's not a true restoration, I know. Of course, I've painted in some of the lights, so it's a, it's a custom, you know, a resto custom. But anyway, thank you to my one and only Patreon, Wheels and Things. And thank you guys for watching. Stick around, please. There's many more to come.